Uh, a very good afternoon to the respected jury members. Uh, I would like to take the opportunity to start my presentation. So uh, the first picture here shows law and order. The, yeah. the second one is CSI. Here we see Dr. Salunke from the infamous CID. And then here we have, they are known for his famous action, Darwaza Tordo, right? So uh, all of them have two things in common. Uh, the number one is they are all crime related TV series. And number two is they all have forensics associated with them. Now, you must be wondering why am I testing your knowledge on uh, TV series and about all these shows? Uh, as of now, I'm certainly not. So uh, let me quickly uh, introduce my topic for today. So that's forensic odontology, a peek into the mind of dentists, uh, which is a study conducted by myself, Dr. Rahul Pandey, a first year postgraduate student under the guidance of Dr. Avantika Tulimam, professor and head, uh, and Dr. Nitin Kanduri, sir, a leader from the Department of Pediatric and Preventive Dentistry, Seema Dental College and Hospital, Trishikesh. Now this study was an online survey-based cross-sectional study. <clears throat> So um, forensic odontology, uh, although included in the curriculum of the undergraduate students and postgraduate departments of oral medicine and oral pathology, lacks awareness amongst the dental professionals across the country. Limited evidence is present, comparing uh, the knowledge of between undergraduates and postgraduates, and no literature to the best of my knowledge uh, is present pertaining to the topic in the state of Uttarakhand. Hence, the aim of my study was to assess the knowledge, awareness, and attitude of uh, forensic odontology among undergraduate and postgraduate students in Uttarakhand. So uh, an online questionnaire was customized based on previously validated and published studies containing 19 questions, which were divided into the knowledge-based, attitudes-based, and practice-based questions. Sample size was calculated using the, using the caution sample size calculation formula to 279. A go, uh, online Google form was uh, prepared containing the questionnaire, which was circulated among the undergraduate and postgraduate students of our institution. Uh, so uh, the, these responses were recorded on the Google forms and they were divided into the undergraduate and postgraduate students using the SPSS software and the results were tabulated in Microsoft Excel. Let's take a look at the minds of these professionals now. So a total of 357 responses were uh, recorded, out of which 322 uh, belong to the undergraduates and 35 responses were from the postgraduate students. Moving on to the results of knowledge-based questions. So uh, in these questions, uh, what was found was that the knowledge about forensic odontology as a branch of dentistry and the presence of formal courses in India uh, was uh, found to be closely related between the two groups. Also, the awareness about uh, dentists test testifying as an expert in uh, court, forensic odontology playing a role in mass disasters, uh, the uh, importance of bite marks in forensic odontology and teeth serving as a source of DNA was uh, the knowledge of these questions was found more in the postgraduates as compared to the undergraduate participants. Also, 64% um, uh, of the uh, undergraduates were unaware of forensic odontology being part of their curriculum, which was astonishing. And the yes responses uh, for the question uh, asking the usage of dental records to identify diseased persons was also closely related between the two groups. Uh, the next questions that asked, were asked in the knowledge uh, section was about the source of the knowledge of forensic odontology, where the options given to the participants were workshops or lectures in college, media like internet, television, uh, newspapers, and others, where uh, we found that the uh, postgraduates uh, post uh, got their information mostly from workshops and colleges, and a majority of the undergraduates uh, chose the option of media, such as internet and television, as a source of knowledge. When asked about the uh, uh, the uh, signs or identification of eruption patterns in children and adults, 97% of the postgraduates uh, responded uh, with the eruption patterns and calcification, and uh, uh, around 94% uh, responded with uh, 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 of the uh, undergraduate students responded to the same option. Yeah. 
uh, in the next question, uh, they were asked about the uh, identification signs and symptoms of child abuse, where the options given to them were physical injuries, behavioral changes, uh, any scars if present in all of the above, and both the parties, a uh, majority of them chose all of the above. And uh, when asked about the uh, uh, the term used for the study of lip prints, uh, and uh, the uh, ninety one percent of the postgraduate students chose the right option of keloscopy, whereas only sixty eight percent of the undergraduate uh, students chose the right option. Then moving on to the results of attitude based questions. So in this, the first question asked was, uh, do you feel our country has limited resources in forensic science, where 68% uh, of the uh, undergraduates and 62% of the postgraduates refused uh, that we do not have limited resources. 90.6% of the uh, undergraduates and 85% of the postgraduates uh, thought that there was a scope of forensic odontology as a profession. And 90.3% of the undergraduates and 91% uh, percent of the postgraduates were interested in formal training in forensic odontology. When asked how confident they were in giving opinion about forensic odontology, 46% of the undergraduates uh, said that they were confident, whereas 49% of the postgraduates said that they were confident. Then we have the results uh, on practice-based questions. So uh, here the first question asked was whether uh, uh, they uh, whether they uh, uh, used uh, uh, whether they preserved the uh, patient records. So in that uh, we can see that majority of the postgraduate students uh, responded positively in this question. And uh, uh, the next follow-up question here was, how did they maintain these records? So here, uh, the options given to them were casts, radiographs, patient photographs, case records of the patients, and all of the above. And uh, around 80% of the postgraduate students replied with all of the above, uh, uh, with and uh, alternatively, 48.4% of the undergraduates responded with the same option. The next question was, once they have identified symptoms of child abuse, uh, what would they do? And the options here were informing the police, informing non-governmental organizations, informing the parents and taking no action. Here again, 52% uh, of the undergraduates and 48% uh, of the uh, postgraduates said that they would uh, choose the option of informing the police. That is the majority of the answer. Which brings me to my concluding remarks. Uh, so the knowledge of postgraduates about forensic odontology was found to be more in comparison, uh, more in postgraduates in comparison with the undergraduates. And 90% uh, of the undergraduates and 91% of the postgraduates agreed that advanced courses in forensic odontology is the need of the hour. Hence the curriculum updates by the governing bodies are to make forensic odontology more accessible to the students uh, as a career opportunity is uh, required. And uh, ever since the beginning of the pandemic, uh, there has been a rise in the domestic violence cases and child abuse cases around the world. Uh, therefore, the onus is on us as pediatric dentists uh, in timely identification of such signs and uh, reporting them to the concerned authorities. And uh, with this, I would like to uh, conclude my uh, presentation and I would like to urge everyone to stay safe and stay healthy and be positive and uh, we will get over this soon. Thank you so much.